It is what it is. NFC South. All right, here we go. Uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks. They uh, they didn't have a ton of picks, but that's okay. Uh, they need their their win total right now is sitting at eight and a half at Vegas. So, you know, okay, a lot of people high on them. They've got low Super Bowl odds, all that kind of stuff. However, their win total is still sitting at eight and a half. So it's not crazy. Uh, let's roll through their needs. They needed, and this is for this coming season. I, I swear to God, we have had people killing us in the YouTube comments on each one of these talking about, and it was mostly Rams fans that are, you know, y'all talk about needs, but you know, we're, we're looking into the future two, three years in these picks and blah, 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 whatever. Their needs for this season were cornerback, offensive line and defensive line. Okay. Now, here's what the Bucks ended up getting, and we'll just roll through them, and then you and I can talk about them. Round one, they got tackle Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa, who Chris believes is the best tackle in this draft, and I think I would agree with him. Round two, they got safety Antoine Winfield Jr. out of Minnesota. He is pretty awesome. I, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, that. I think that was a steal at 45. Number 76, round three, they got running back Kashawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt. Round five, they got wide receiver Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota. Round six, Khalil Davis out of Nebraska. And then they had two picks in round seven. They got Chappelle Russell out of Temple, uh, linebacker. And then they got running back Raymond Calais out of Louisiana. That's one of Billy Napier's kids, and all them boys can play. So, um, they they traded up one spot with the 49ers to make sure that they got Tristan Wirfs. And, and we can talk about whether or not it was worth uh, trading up one spot or not, I think in order to ensure that the 49ers don't trade with anybody else, that you that can go it. up and get the best tackle in this draft, I think it was a good draft. I think it was a good I'm say, I don't think they gave up much. They didn't give up hardly they, anything. They gave up number 14 and number 117 to the 49ers in exchange for number 13 and number 245. So they, yeah. they got that last seventh-round pick uh, in exchange for basically a, a fourth-round pick. Yeah. And that's, that's not, that's I think not so okay. bad. And, and here's the thing. The the reason you do that is because you have good enough intel to know that somebody else is trading up to take that pick. Yeah. And I, I now obviously there was no news about it, but I, I think, no. you know, you you make that pit, you make that trade just to ensure that it, nobody else does it. There because, was there was no news about it, but this was also the least like news insider um draft we've ever had. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I mean, no, so, nobody knew so what was going on. So just because it wasn't reported, you know, the teams we know it didn't happen with were, you know, the teams where there was a writer that was on the Zoom with these guys going through it and had the information. But that was only like three teams had that. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, second round, Antoine Winfield. I think this is a steal. I I thought that he was a first round talent. Uh, there's all the stuff. Our Northwestern boys over at Westlot Pirates, they it, this was one of the kids that was involved in the uh, sexual assault scandal that it, that ended up costing Tracy Clays his job, basically because he he sided with the kids over the school and blah blah, blah all that kind of mess. Um, yeah, I all that stuff aside, talent. Antoine Winfield was a first round talent. Uh, he yep. is part of what made Minnesota so good last year. Their defense, uh, while that wasn't what everybody talked about, everybody talked about the wide receivers, whatever, uh, he was outstanding in coverage. He was outstanding uh, in zone. Uh, this is what Pro Football Focus said about him. Uh, former NFL, uh, sorry, former Minnesota safety with NFL bloodlines. Uh, he's an uber instinctive player who also checked boxes at the combine with his four four five second 40-yard dash. Uh, Mike Renner said, I think he can do things that you want from a versatile modern safety. You can tell when a safety just sees things at a different level, and it shows up again and again on Winfield's tape this past uh, season. The injury history is a concern, but I am more than willing to take a shot on him at 45. Everything that I'm saying here. Uh, Tim Crosby jumps in on Facebook, by the way, at, and I'm guessing that this is his team here. Uh, he said, Ed Reedish. Um, and he's, you know, giving the, the crossed fingers here. Uh, but he said the Bucks got the steal of the draft with Tyler Johnson. Worf and Winfield will produce early. Vaughn is the most underrated pick in the draft. Okay, let's let's kind of tackle these as we go. Keyshawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt. Incredible speed, incredible running back. Played on an awful team. 
But you were able to see what he could, what he was capable of. I think they kind of got a steal here. He is a a poor man's Clyde edwards helaire and he may be just as good. He just wasn't on as good of a team. Um, That's right. Yeah, he just we just don't know what he what he did, you know, in that kind of system at Vanderbilt. Bruce Arians, Byron Leftwich, Tom Brady, they're gonna get him the ball. 100%. And if this guy can can catch the ball out of the backfield, that is you know that is James White is what Tom Brady wants. He really doesn't even have to be have the speed that he has, but he he's got to be able to get get open, catch the ball out of the backfield. It's just the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, Pro Football Focus said Vaughn is a solid zone runner with plus speed and burst. He'll get what's blocked and then a little extra. He ranked seventh among all running backs, and he was 146th on PFF's final big board. So if if you look at their final big board, you know 146, and they took him at 76. You you can say that they reached here. I don't think this was a reach. This was a need, and this is a kid that fit exactly what they were wanting to do in Tampa Bay. So I'm all over that. We knew they were coming out of this with a running back. I don't know that there was a better running back that was taken behind him. And there's the thing is, if they had a pick earlier, would they have taken a better running back? Maybe. But but that wasn't available to them. And I don't know that there was a better guy behind them. No, you and I both preach about the safety position in the NFL. Uh, You needed a safety. You know, you needed some some secondary help. You go get Antoine Winfield. I think that's a good pick. I think Keyshawn Vaughn. Very valuable pick there in uh, in the third round. In round five, they got wide receiver Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota. The kid can play. He can absolutely play. He is uh, something else. Uh, is he the real tall receiver they had? I don't know. They had, they had a couple of receivers there at Minnesota that were really good. One of those dudes was super long. Um, I'm trying to I'm about to Hold on. I'm, I'm looking up his, uh, his combine stuff right quick. Let's see. Tyler Johnson. It doesn't have it. Hold on. It's pulling up. Did you know that there was a Tyler Johnson that plays for the Tampa Bay Lightning? So just Tyler Johnson, Tampa Bay is not good. I did not. I, I looked up Tyler Johnson, Minnesota. He is six what foot the hell one. Is that? He's six one, two hundred and six pounds. Uh, so six one's not okay. So he's no, he's not, he's the, not super the super tall guy. guy I was thinking of. Okay, no, he's sure not. Uh, but that's okay. So, <laughs> Link, come on. You want to come over here? Here, come here. We got we got family stuff going on today. Good gracious. Uh, so I don't see a combine as far as speed. I don't see, you know, anything crazy. I do know this: that Minnesota offense was unreal last year. Uh, PJ Fleck is able to. That's right. It is football, buddy. Um, Lincoln's about to go take pictures. So that's what's going on for anybody that's curious. What's happening here? Uh, they're about to leave. So. Um, there's no speed. There's no. Do you want down here? Go get mommy. Go get mommy. <laughs> uh, I, there's no speed on him, but I know he's fast. Uh, let's see. Play strength reminiscent of AJ Brown. Um, let's see. He had a whole lot of school records at Minnesota. I mean, this is all NFL.com stuff. I, I think Tyler Johnson was a steal in round five. I think it was absolutely a steal. Uh, defensive lineman Khalil Davis out of Nebraska. Eh, we'll see. These these are all flyers. And then Chappelle Russell, linebacker out of Temple, and running back Raymond Calais out of Louisiana. To to wrap it up, I I'll tell you this. Let's let's go ahead and talk about uh, whether we like or dislike. I like the Bucks draft. I mean, you could tell they have a plan. They have an idea. We trust Bruce Arians and that staff to be able to put together uh, a a competitive team. I I think this was uh. I think this was a really good draft. I like what they did. Yeah, I do too. No, I think I think that team is is a pretty complete team. I mean, they're really good at all levels of the game. I mean, this this is part building for the future and and building for right now. I mean, you've right. got guys that can contribute immediately. Tristan Run, Works is going to be a day one walk starter. in the door and play day one. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and same same with Tristan Wirfs. I think he will he will start game one. So is what it, Tim Tim said. Come on down to Tampa this year. We may go see Tim, and we may go see TJ here in a little while. I mean, we'll we'll see. It all depends on on on, on the COVID, I guess you could say. Uh, let's jump off of them. 